flour, salt, so it's a cup of flour, mix it in with half a cup of salt, and then half a cup of water, you mix that up, and for this particular dough, I put in some green food colouring, so it's already mixed in there. You could paint it later if you wanted to, but if you dye it already, then the job's done. Mix that around until you've got a nice soft dough like this. You don't want it too sticky. If it's too sticky, add equal parts of the flour and the salt to get it to the right consistency. This also could be used as play dough, so you could put it into Ziploc bags squeeze all the air out, zip it up, you might want to cut your raw dough into separate separate lumps and then mix different colours and so you've got different uh, play doughs. And then the other good thing about that is, is once the kids, if they have a little play dough sculpture they've made that they want to keep, then you could bake it and they can keep it forever. So you make sure you've got some flour on your board, roll it out if you don't have a rolling pin like me, you can just use a bottle, and most of us have got a few of those in our cupboard at the moment. Sprinkle that on, and then you can cut shapes out. Actually, well, I'm going to add some more to that. Roll out a wee bit more, because we're going to make a leaf. I've got hydrangeas in my garden, so that's what we're going to use today. So use the back of the leaf because that's where the little ridges stick out the most. Press that on, press it right in there and then you can cut round. Those noises in the background are my dogs <laughs> sneezing and wanting to go for a walk. They're very annoyed. Right, so there you go and then you just pull that away. And you've got these lovely prints. Oh, that one, I might put that in. Push that bit in a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Take that away. So I've cut that straight with the knife to get that edge that's sharp. If you wanted a more embossed edge, beveled, you would use a bit of plastic. It can be recycled bread bag, whatever. And then you get a nice soft curve on your edge. That's really nice if you're making jewellery pieces because then you get that curve and then you don't have to sand it, it's already soft. And see how this has got a few rough bits there? You can sand those down again later as well. So to get the curve like we've got on this one here, you just put this into a little bowl, one that's oven proof, and you pop it in there and then you've got a nice curve. Get in the right position. If you handle it too much, you're going to ruin those lovely little creases. So that will cook in there as long as that's um, oven proof. You have your oven on at 120 degrees and you cook it for two hours. Once it's cooked, it'll all be one dusty kind of colour and there won't be any wet, obvious wet patches. Then you could take it out of the bowl and drop it on top and cook it for another half an hour. Otherwise, this area here isn't going to dry out. Turn your oven off and just leave them in the oven for a bit longer. So they're not actually cooking, they're drying. So once they're dry, they need to be coated to seal them. It's a food product, so if it uh, gets wet, it's going to absorb moisture because it's flour and water. It could rot from the inside or just go all saggy. So you want to make it, as long as it's really, really dry, as rigid as possible. So I've used a varnish, you could use PVA glue, you do one side, let it sit, turn it over, do the other side, do at least two or three coats to make sure you haven't missed any little areas where moisture could get through to the clay. And this is just the natural colour underneath and then I've used a um, golden interference colour to give that kind of sheen to it. And then I've used another golden product. Um, to do the little veins here and to do the edge and then I've given it a few more coats you could spray coat it as well if you've got some varnish uh, but otherwise PVA is good just make sure it's completely dry before you put the next coat on add a little bit of water to it so that it uh, is a bit more easily moved around 
The other thing you could do, if you have buttons or anything with texture, lace, um, fabric, uh, zippers, anything, you could press them in. I've got a stamp here. You have to make sure that the surface has got a bit of flour on it, otherwise the stamp will get all glued up. There you go, you press it in, you've got that. And you'll be able to just brush that off later once it's uh, been baked. So that's what I've done on this bowl here. It's got the embossing. I sealed it and then I painted it. I also painted it again on the interior with that iridescent and then I put a coat of varnish over the top of that. So that was over this really small bowl. Did it on the inside to start with and then I did it on the outside to make sure it was completely cooked. So that's a really cute wreath. That's a really solid little bowl. Okay, move that away. Of course you could use smaller leaves. So here's a smaller leaf that I've made into a pendant. Again, that's the that's the food colouring in there. I painted this, sealed it all up, and then just found a chain, recycled chain to pop it on to make it into a necklace. You could cut out all different shapes. If you've got cookie cutters, that's the best thing. So this one here, love heart. Keep all the bows that people ever give you. You could also mix seeds into the mix and then if you were to give this to someone, say as a, a tag on a Christmas present, birthday present with their name on it, then they could take that and put it in a pot and uh, the seeds will sprout if you put enough moisture, moisture on there, as long as it's not completely sealed. If that's your intention is for seeds to grow, don't completely seal it. If you want a more rustic look, use wholemeal flour and then you'll get something that looks like... Um, like a recycled paper look. Now the other thing we can do is beads. To get even sizes with your beads, roll a ball, roll it out like this into a sausage, cut the ends off so they're nice and straight. If you want them all to be the same size, chop in the middle, chop in the middle, chop in the middle and just keep chopping half half and then you know that they're all the same size. And if you wanted smaller beads, chop those ones in half. And then what you do next is if you've got a kebab stick, that's great. I don't. I just have my uh, paintbrush. So you go one way and you want it to look nice on both sides. Then you go the other way. So there's a big one. And then there's a lot of one, a big one there. So you've got the two different beads there. Now, what I've done with this here is the piece of elastic that comes for when you buy you know, like cheap shoes at the bulk stores and they're tied together with elastic. Always untie that elastic and keep it for later because it's just the right size for bracelets. Again, I've varnished these and painted them. These dots I've done with a fine line marker. You can get any of these paints at Gordon Harris in New Zealand or order them online. And, uh, or you could just use marker pens. So you could write on here with marker pens if you wanted to. Or use any of those techniques. So that's what you need. A cup of flour, half a cup of salt, mm. half a cup of water. In the oven for two and a half hours at 120 degrees. Happy making and send me some pictures. If you do make some things, I'd love to see what you come up with. Thanks.